Happy New Year's, everyone. This is Shama with Girls and Geese. We're excited to do our very first Ask a Black Belt segment today. We have Olga Leshevska on with us. She will be answering your questions. If you don't know who she is, she is a black belt out of Ireland. Um, she is an amazing competitor, an instructor, and a doctor researcher as well. So if you guys have not tuned in for an Ask a Black Belt previously, how it works is you ask the questions, she answers them, and uh, she will uh, tell you all about her speech. She has a wealth of knowledge uh, to share with you guys. So I hope you guys had a happy new year. It was, it was safe and it was fun. So yay, we got Le- Olga on. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Happy new year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Thank you for Good doing to see this. you. You too. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for jumping on after a, a night of uh, a lot of fun, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> that was very quiet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like most of us. <laughs> I know. We're stuck in uh, quarantine or social distancing. <laughs> I know. I know. Just, just at home, really. <laughs> <laughs> So so tell everybody out there just a little bit something about yourself. I kind of told them a little bit, but uh, if you want to tell them a little bit more. Okay, sure. Uh, so my name is Olga. Um, I am uh, originally from Russia, but the uh, last 15 years or so I've been uh, around uh, elsewhere in Europe, so mostly in the Netherlands and in Ireland, so kind of in between two countries. And... Um, uh, I started jiu-jitsu over 15 years ago, and uh, I got black belt in 2010. Oh, sorry, 2015. 2010 was judo black belt, so 2015 was jiu-jitsu black belt, five years later. Uh, yeah, and uh, since then, I keep keep on training. I have my uh, girls group. Um, well, at the moment, it's kind of all post, uh, you understand, but uh, yes, uh, like uh, I like to teach jiu-jitsu as well. I like to compete, you know. Like, at the moment, it's all quiet, but hopefully we get back to normal very soon. <laughs> yes, yes, we're, we're, we're hoping. <laughs> yeah, I, I have just a bit of patience, you know. Yeah. How did you, get, how did you find jiu-jitsu? Did you find jiu-jitsu while you were in Russia or while you were in the Netherlands? Um, or? You know, I actually started when I was in the Netherlands. Uh, and uh, it was, like, I keep saying the same story. It, is, it was really like, a, like a, you know, being in the right place in the right time you know I didn't really know what it was and I didn't know I would really you know like it so much I was just curious and I said like oh what is, what's it about I just go and I check it out uh, I was just like I had just evening free from all other sport activities I was always doing you know I was dancing at the time and doing all kinds of things and when I got there um, I saw all the cool people coming in and uh, like to join the class and I almost went home because I was intimidated I saw like man like belt yeah like you know uh, and I was th- I was really kind of intimidated, and then I was about to go, and then coach came out, and he saw me, and he said, "Oh, you knew you want to join." I said, "No, no, I want just to you know to have a look." He said, "No, you can't watch. You need to join." <laughs> I said, "Okay." <laughs> and, and the funny thing is that they had a, like um, it was a university club, so they had um, geese to borrow, you know, like for, for 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 people who don't have their own stuff. So he said, "Just go there, grab a gee, get." grab a belt and come back it's like okay fine so I got back we started doing a warm-up and I was I was I was terrible and then he looked at me and he said Olga uh, what belt are you and I looked at my belt it was some some colored belt I don't know I said I don't know he said why are you wearing colored belt I said I said I don't know so I was so like I was crazy I just got something first out of the box you know <laughs> Like, and that's enough. it <laughs> and that's it and I never stopped really never stop and then uh, like it's like a moral of the story is I you don't know what it is until you try it really and if someone would tell me oh it's going to be you know amazing and you're going to have it for your life and all that I would be like I, I wouldn't believe so like now when people I try to get new members you know I say come and try and they say, oh, no, no, I don't like fighting. I don't like punching. It's like, we don't punch. We don't fight. Just come and try. And if you don't like it, I will never ask you again because it is just like that. You need to try it. And then you know what it is. It was just my own experience. 
So, so did judo come later? Judo was uh, at the same time, really. I started jujitsu there, and then uh, it was not enough for me. I wanted more training, and then I asked, "What else can I do?" And my coach at the time he said, "Oh, there is a judo on uh, like Monday night or something. Uh, it's always the same. You will like it." I was like, "Okay, cool." So I just went, and it was just uh, like that. And uh, I think, like. Um, I, people often ask me what I prefer, and I, 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 suppose, I suppose this question will come up at some stage, but I, I think they're so complementary that it doesn't, for me, it's kind of uh, the same. Different rules impose different game, but they really complement each other. So, uh, yeah, so in that, side, it's, it's, it's that way, I was kind of always training, you know, on the, on the side, both of them. I think until I got my black belt in judo, like, uh, I did like 50-50 and then I kind of shifted more towards Jiu-Jitsu, maybe 80-20, like percent. And uh, and then I picked up more Judo again in uh, last year, 2019, so now it was now not last year, but year before, uh, like mm -hmm. over a year ago, just slightly over a year, um, I decided to do some big event for Judo just to, you know, just to try because I've never competed international, it was always kind of like a national event. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to the worlds, and uh, I like I was completely like you know you're there, you don't know anybody. It's amazing. You don't know any fighters. You don't know any names, any big names. You don't care. You don't. You are just like for fun. And uh, I did well. I got bronze. Um, oh, and wow. I was like, yeah, I was like, oh wow. And and I think it's like for jiu jitsu, it's almost impossible going somewhere on event without knowing uh, people you fight because it's a small community and we fight each other all the time. Mm -hmm. Unless you travel far away, uh, you might get someone new, but then same category, same weight, you're kind of limited to the same people, you know what I mean? <laughs> I like, and in Judah, more females, and I had like 10 women, uh, and I didn't know anybody, obviously, oh, wow. because I just don't keep track on them, and it was amazing. Like, maybe I would be intimidated by knowing that someone is really good at something, and then it would affect my performance, but it didn't because I didn't know, I was naive, like, yeah, and it is the best, better. it is the best, it is better, but then how do you switch off your brain and jujitsu when you know them, like, you know? <laughs> no, I, I understand. I, back in the day, I, I had to compete with uh, Mackenzie and Bia yeah. and Angelica when they were in their purple. Yeah. And it was, it was like, but I didn't know who they were then, so it helped. To oh, it's like, great, it's great. I had no uh, enjoy idea. that. It's, that's, that's the best. Uh, so, so, and in a way, when I like at Jiu Jitsu, I was through phases when you go as a beginner, like, you know, blue belt, purple belt, you don't care, you just go and you face whoever. Then I started kind of looking up people, uh, like about brown belt time, and then I said, like, no point, I, I don't do that anymore. And yeah. as a black belt, I never look up. First of all, uh, mo most of them you know anyway, and secondly, it's just, uh, it, it affects you. Like, yeah. you just go there, do yourself, do your best, and if your best is enough to be the best on the days, and it is what it is, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so tell us, like, give us a little idea. What was jujitsu like in Europe? And I know Europe's huge, but in in your little window in into that area, what was it like fifteen years ago? Yeah, being it's a, a woman. Yes, know? it is. Like uh, when I started uh, jujitsu, it was not even officially called Brazilian jujitsu. Like now I know it was because we what I learned that it's exactly the same what we would teach now, like white belts. We did a bit of self-defense on top of it, which is a bonus, but we should really be teaching some self-defense, um, I think, like, you know, to white belts and blue belts, whoever. I think it's a part of it, but it's a separate question anyway. So back then, uh, like, when I started training, like, obviously, I think most girls would know now, like, you know, uh, I only had the one more girl in my gym, and I was lucky. Uh, I was competing with guys up until purple belt, like against guys, uh, in the guys categories, like weight categories. And uh, it was um, like my reality. You either go on competition and you fight whoever is there or you don't, because if you, as I say, there are no girls to compete, then you're just staying at home, you know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I went through white, blue and purple belt phases fighting just men. And uh, um, yeah, so like back then, you know, there were not many, uh, people in general and way less female that's for sure and then like even like 10 years later me looking back or now 15 years going to the same events we had back then 
and I see amazing, like up until brown belts are categories, like, you know, there are a few fighters in each of them. So, which is amazing. Like it's, it grows really like rapidly. What, what is it like now? I, I see all these like women's camps popping up and these women's teams and, and, and what, how, and looking back, did you ever think that it would evolve into, into what it's shaping up to be? I could never imagine, to be honest with you, because, like, uh, first of all, we started very small, like, you know, there are a few groups, a few bunch of guys just wrestling, you know, and uh, some local local events just going to another club or just a few clubs together doing some event, like, of maybe, like, 200 people or something, and now these days is like, you know, 1,000, 5,000, if it's a European or something, I know it's huge. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and people are new people. Like of course, some people stop it after some time. But same people kind of travel through, you know, go through the years. And uh, it's like, uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like. I wouldn't. Uh, if someone told me like back then uh, that uh, it would develop this way, I, I probably wouldn't believe because like, <laughs> why would it? You know. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, so you've traveled, I mean, I met you in the U.S. I think I met you in the Pacific Northwest when you happened to be up there and you came yep. to one of our events. Um, yep. What is it like for you, you know, when you are able to kind of travel and go to these different areas? And what is something that you really take with you when you come back from all these experiences? I know they're so different. Yeah, I think I take away, uh, well, many things, obviously, uh, but uh, uh, apart from this very special thing is uh, like maybe friendship, you know, because I have so many uh, friends from uh, all around the world from from Jiu Jitsu. Like even like 10 years ago, me traveling to Canada, I was training there with guys and I'm still in touch with the same people or me go being to France, like I think it was 2010 again, and I'm still in touch with people. We go on competitions and we meet each other and we're chatting away. So it's like, uh, I think, it's not just like technical part that you are getting better at what you do, but it's also um, that you, you know, expand your kind of friendship, like network in a way. And then wherever you go, I feel like welcome. I know, oh, this is a place I know those guys. And if I don't know, I'm just looking it up and I go and I meet people. It's always very easy. You know, you just come and you say, hi, you know, I'm Olga, can I join you? And nobody never told me, no, you can't. People were excited. <laughs> they would open their doors and they say, oh, come again. And they would entertain me. And uh, it's perfect. Like, this is how you should treat each other. <laughs> Yeah, outside of the jiu-jitsu world. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And um, and obviously, I think it's nice, like, um, obviously, we meet a lot of people, like, on competitions, but it's very different. It is a stressful um, atmosphere, and uh, many people, like, don't get uh, to know, well, we don't get to know each other because we are only focusing on doing our thing, and when it's done, we may, might or might not uh, chat to each other, and then you kind of don't have, like, set the same connection. But then if you start kind of meeting each other at like, you know, seminars or some training camps, this is when it's kind of getting more, um, you know, relaxing and then you get to know each other, which is great. Yeah. So of, of all your experiences of your of traveling and meeting all these people, what are if, if you were to, you know, take us, I'm, I'm sure you have a lot of experiences that you hold dear to your heart, but if you were to pick just one uh, that really kind of stands out to you, what, what would that be? Um, maybe, um, maybe for competition kind of experience would be uh, 2016. Uh, it's, it's the same time we met uh, like after Worlds in uh, Las Vegas uh, because it was my first time being there and it was the first year of me competing as a black belt because I got my black belt 2015 and 2016 summer, it was just half half a year after I got it. Uh, and uh, yes, I, I, it was the same kind of, you go there, you, you don't know what to expect. And uh, my preparation was, you know, I felt good. I, I felt like, you know, I was on same on good level and I, I got, like I got first, which was uh, amazing. Like it was beyond my Yay. expectations. Of course, of course you expect, uh, you want to do well, but you, you don't know, you know what it is. <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's probably one of the kind of, you know, standing, like, 
uh, events which I probably would remember. Like second time is still fun, and third time is fun, but it's it's second time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The first time is that what you can tell your grandchildren about. <laughs> exactly, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so and the, you... and the, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, and then and then and then I was training there in the gym, and they told me about your event, Girls and Geese, and it was just like, well, for me it was coincidence. I was like, oh yes, and I was, oh my God, over hundred uh, <laughs> women training on the mat, and it, we were like with I think six or whatever six black belts with it, and or yeah. maybe more. I don't I don't remember, and I was like, wow, <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. It, it it it's been a different it, uh, pr the progression in the states has kind of like slowly but steadily but now it seems like the trajectory is just kind of going there's so many oh, really? women it's so many oh, more wow, acceptable okay. to you know fathers are bringing their daughters in husbands are bringing their wives you know so you get mm -hmm. all these so many more women coming into it. So it's been really cool in the, over the past But, 15 years to see in the U.S. Yeah, as even well. like back, back then for me, uh, U.S. was is, is, and still is, I think, step ahead uh, in terms of numbers and how many people are kind of, you know, involved. Like I know Europe is exploding, but we are kind of behind, you know? Yeah, that's okay. In that, in, in, in that respect. No, we, it's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't mind. It's all about the journey, right? <laughs> Just picking more exactly, people up exactly. along the way. <laughs> so you kind of touched into it, uh, touched on it a little bit earlier. So, you know, I find that a lot, you know, as jujitsu is growing, as it's progressing, you know, you get some people that come in and say, you know, maybe they had some trauma or they, you know, need to feel empowered. So their focus is the self-defense. But I find yeah. that a lot of the people that we see coming in, are just kind of, I'm looking to get in shape, I'm looking to, you know, feel mm -hmm. good about myself. And then they kind of switch over to that competition path, right? And that's kind of their yeah. goal. What are your thoughts of the importance of having that self-defense? Do you think that's something, even if it's not something that you want to focus on, um, what are your thoughts on that? I, I, I believe it is, it is an essential part of it, and it should be taught uh, to students, which is not... Uh, I know in many places or most places uh, I know uh, it's not taught to students and I believe that jiu-jitsu like it should be you know people should know how it can be used uh, for you know to, to uh, original idea of jiu-jitsu was like a you know soft art uh, that you can protect yourself so very often because of comp competition jiu-jitsu these days um, it's kind of developing in that direction that some of the techniques are quite uh, could be quite dangerous in the real life you know uh, so you need to kind of keep it i think in my opinion you need to keep it kind of you know yes you can train all kinds of techniques if you're competing this is your focus so go and do it but you do need to kind of relate it to real situations and what is what what, what might work and what not might not you know things like that like so yes i i think it should be taught And uh, like in, in, in my uh, class, like it's because we only had like you know, two weeks, two times a week uh, class for female only. And then they can train with men all other days as well on top of it. But uh, so I would, you know, if, every time I teach something, I would stress importance. Okay, this is because we do this because of that. Or this technique is good if this happens, you know, like I couldn't really have a separate day on self-defense because, as you said, some people want self-defense, some people don't, some people like it, some find it boring uh, because people have different goals in mind. Uh, but I think it is an essential part of it. So it should be kind of incorporated at least. Yeah. Now, I always yeah, say my... your your gold medal is not going to mean anything if you can't defend yourself on the street. Uh, and that's, that's it. Hopefully that's that it. doesn't at, come. At, at the end of the day, this is what it is. You know, you need to know uh, w what can work for you. And, you know, you need to train that. Yeah. Absolutely. So l moving forward, what are some of your personal goals? Like what are some, you know, you've, you've come and you've taken your world championship medal What's next? <laughs> um, it's kind of hard to say because this year is, is still strange. You know, it will be first year I'm not going to Europeans uh, after maybe from 2008. So it's kind of, but I don't mind, like, as long as I can keep training and I know I'm developing. 
uh, you know, as a as a developing my technique or skills and developing as a like you know in a way that like you keep your mobility up, your fitness and all that. I don't mind like I can go and compete late. It's not uh, it doesn't bother me that much. But I'd say one of the goals would be to keep up at least at, like at some level uh, throughout the years. You know, because I think it's we are, we are not getting younger. You know, every year and year and year and year, <laughs> it's adding up. And uh, I think it's important just to keep up training because we have lots of amazing examples of people in kind of, you know, good age and still doing it. But I think if you, once you stop, it will be very hard to pick it up. So my advice would be like for everyone, just stay, have some kind of, you know, routine and keep on doing it. Because this is what you love at the end of, of the day. And if you stop doing it, it might, you know, you might still want it, but kind of you, your mind might want it, but your body will tell, oh, no, I'm a bit tired. I'm a bit lazy. I'm a bit not fit, like some, you know, things like that. So keep going, like I would say, you know, yeah. I don't even I don't even mind like how many medals we get. I think I'm kind of happy with what I got uh, so far. <laughs> and if I get more, yes, I will be delighted. That's for sure. But then I'd say just, you know, keep your body like in some, you know, like functional mode, you know, that we can keep training. You know, if you want to compete, keep competing, if you enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What are, I'm going to go ahead and close out with this. You know, you've, you've been a part of jujitsu for 15 years. You've seen the evolution within Europe. What are some things that you would like to see moving forward? Where would you like to see jujitsu go? You've come to the U.S. You've seen how it evolved um, and where we're at in the States. Um, but where, where would you like to see it go in Europe? Um. I, I think it would be, well, one of the aspects that's for sure, it would be uh, good to see more young kids training it. Because, like, even talking about, uh, like, I, I, well, I teach women classes, sometimes guys as well, but, like, I don't want to overstretch, you know, like, they love it, but I say no, that's sometimes and mostly girls, just to give them what I didn't have as when I was a white belt, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so, and I find it very hard to get, uh, adults, uh, female. That's because, uh, like, you know, first of all, it is, maybe it is not for everyone, but also because girls don't like, funny enough, I, I didn't know that, but I discovered that in Ireland, girls don't like to sweat. It sounds crazy, isn't it? <laughs> but they realize if they have to go to exercise, they need to take their makeup, they need to cut their nails, mm -hmm. they don't like sweat. So that's a kind of a problem you get, um, you know, like boys have more sports when they you know, grow and the girls might have less sports. And then they, when they get at some age, maybe like I have a few girls. Well, I have girls like 15, 16 years old as well. It's kind of, you know, but it's still, it's already age when it starts to get difficult, you know, to engage them. So, uh, and I'm struggling over and over and over. And I've been teaching for four years and uh, numbers uh, increased. Like I started from scratch with nobody numbers increased and I got like six or seven blue belts already, but it is very hard. Uh, so it is very hard to get motivated adults. Uh, so my, um, well, I would love to see uh, more kids uh, starting at a younger age, like they do in judo, you know, like when they're five or six or something like that, seven, but it doesn't matter. And then when they grow with the sport, you know, and when they come to get 15, 16 years old, they are, you know, they know what it is. And uh, I think it might, it, it will change for sure, like, uh, you know, whole scenery. And there are lots of kids training, but it's just um, like proportion of guys is always like, you know, a lot more guys than girls anyway. So <laughs> what can you do about it? <laughs> you know? Well, ho hopefully yes. we'll continue to see the, the trajectory continue along the same yeah. path as the States, yeah. because yeah. It, it was definitely like that. And, and I can definitely see the challenges that you have. But it was, like I said it, earlier, it, it's a lot of the dads now. I see a lot of the dads now bringing in the little girls. Yeah, and, that's, that's good. But And then now they're growing and they're turning 18 and they're turning Perfect, 18, that's what you want. And they're destroying the women. <laughs> that's that's so what good. you want. That's, yeah. Because, <laughs> like, in, yeah. Uh, like in general, in I think in Europe more than in states, but like average age of uh, you know of people who practice jujitsu is like above average. That's for sure. Like I don't know what's official number, but because people start later, you know, 
And by the time they get to some level, it's they're more like they're older. So I, I hope that this age kind of will shift a little bit, um, to, you know, towards a younger age. That would be good to see. Absolutely. And and I think a lot too, like, you know, when, when you and I started, it was like, you, it was a man's world, right? So the oh, makeup that's and the yeah. nails and everything didn't have a place. So you had to kind of put your femininity off to the side. And, and what we've seen here is, you know, there's a lot of women who still embrace their feminine side, but have this real strong side to that they use jujitsu for. So I, I can see that happening there. So hopefully that'll evolve on to where yeah, women absolutely. can understand that, you know what, we can still yeah. be feminine, we can be beautiful. It, 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 it's, yeah, exactly. It, does, it has nothing to do with it. Like, yes, I can't have any nails, but I don't mind. Like, I mean, it's maybe yeah. it's me, but you know, you can still have long hair. It doesn't matter. You can have yeah. makeup on. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's you all can the still same. Paint like. your nails. And 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 even like if they realize that uh, having that power of kind of you know beating up men and then put up your makeup and a dress and look nice, it's kind of cool, isn't it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, well, it was such a pleasure. I'm so happy that we got to start off the Yay. year with you. And, and, and well, it'll just keep on this high note. So we I'm, will. Yes, it's a great start of the year. <laughs> Let's yeah, hope very for that. Much so. <laughs> well, I hope I catch you next time in Europe. Absolutely. The States, or I'm over in Absolutely. Ireland. And I'm glad Absolutely. I'm going to get you involved. You're, first, you're our first European. Uh, contact and so we hope to feature more and more international we keep in events. touch and we 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 get uh, get going as soon as we can absolutely thank you so much for being on thank today. you for asking no for sure thank you everybody for tuning in and supporting uh if you guys haven't already heard we have some amazing upcoming uh classes going on with via mosquito on january 9th so tune in that's for everybody. Uh, it's an online class. And we also have one uh, with Sweaty Betty's. It's our United She Stands project with Jazari Matuda. So check out our online options for training at home while we are in quarantine and social distancing. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is, right? <laughs> Hopefully this changes soon. But all right. Well, thank you so much. Take care. Thank you so and, much. It was a pleasure. Yeah, we'll, we'll do some awesome stuff soon. <laughs> and Happy New Year again. <laughs> yes, Happy New Year. Let's hope 2021 is a All the best. Year. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.